What's that you say? That looks like a lovely looking chair. Well, if you'll excuse me whilst I just innocently sit on this lovely looking chair, just a short second. Oh, indeed, Sir Quixelot the third. Well, you may or may not know that I've already done the X Racer rant video on the TFI Cartier channel. Link is in the description down below if you want to go and see all the issues that I've had. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, mate, 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 creaking, creaking, excuse me, I'm just going to shuffle ever so slightly. You might be thinking, mate, all you've got to do is just oil it. Well, first, what I've got to say to you, mate, is no, I don't. It's a brand new chair. It should not need oiled. B, <laughs> I have oiled it. I've drenched this thing in WD-40. I have dipped it in a bath of WD-40. It's not made the slightest bit of difference. C, I got in touch with the X-Razor. And I was like, mate, this chair's creaking like an old floorboard. What are you going to do about it? They were like, we'll send you a new gas cylinder. What do they do? They send me a second-hand gas cylinder, <laughs> which I'm just like, I'm not even going to put that in. Stop wasting my time. I've had enough of you utter bumpkins. I'm done with you. Then what happened was a company called Quirce has gone in touch with me. They were like, mate, where are the new kids on the block around here? Nobody says that anymore. I'm going to stop saying that. Nobody says new kids on the block. So I'm not going to say that anymore. But they were like, we're new. We've got this new range of chairs coming out. We've saw the problems that you're having with the DX Racer chair. We'd love to send you one of our chairs. Just open it up. See what you think of it. Do a video on it and then just see how it goes. And I was like, mm, OK, go on, send one over. And so that's what happened and that's what they did and it's just arrived today now before i get cracking you might be thinking to yourself mate i've saw your dx razor and video and you said specifically at the start of that video <laughs> that you do not trust the opinions of anyone that says their thoughts on something that they were given for free however in my defense i'm doing all right i don't need to ruin my reputation i do not need to jeopardize my channel which isn't i'm trying to grow it it's not very big but i do not need to wreck everything i've tried to do over three years to brown nose a company that sent me a free chair i just really don't i don't need a free chair i didn't particularly want a free chair i just got sent it but i'll leave that up to you to make and form your own opinions from with that being said and done and without any further ado this is the chair that i was sent from quersus quersus g7 that just didn't work did it the trying the click and the, the trying the just the, the Quirsus G702 from the Geos range of chairs. So what I'm going to do is show you some lovely B-roll of the chair so you can have a quick go at it before getting into talking about it a little bit more. So roll that B-roll. I'm telling someone to roll B-roll like there's somebody there. There's, there's nobody there. It's just me. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Anyway, on with the B-roll. Please inspect the product signing. I, I assume that's supposed to mean please inspect the product before signing, but it's just not really practical, is it? Excuse me, Mr. Delivery Driver, I know you have a ton of other deliveries to get to today and you're behind schedule. But just hold there whilst I uh, take this box upstairs, unopen everything, unpackage everything and inspect it thoroughly before you be on your merry way. I'd be most grateful. It's not going to happen, is it? So there's some lovely B-roll of the chair. What do you reckon? What do you think it looks like? I think it looks all right, no? It looks, it's a good looking chair. It's good, good stature. It's got good presence. So what I'm gonna do is right now, I'm gonna give you my first impressions of it. Knowing that I can form a decent opinion after maybe a week or two, I'm gonna leave it for a week or two before I finish this video. You'll see the results of that straight after this clip anyway. 
But uh, I'm going to give my first impressions now and then my final thoughts at the end of this video after living with it for a week or two. So first impressions. The packaging was a bit naff. Inside it was fine though. Inside it was well it was well padded. Everything was well protected inside so that was all good. The build experience was good. Pretty quick, pretty straightforward. There was eight bolts or so. Everything was there, nothing was missing. There wasn't any spare bolts though, which knowing how things can go missing, it would have been nice, you know, not me losing them, but you know, things getting forgotten and put, be put in the box. It would have been nice if, just, if the bomb just had one extra bolt in there maybe. I don't know. But anyway, it was fine. There was a hole in it though. You saw that in the, the B-roll, um, in the build log. There was a hole in the back of the chair. It's the back of the base. Nowhere near as bad as what it was in the DX Racer chair, but there was still a hole in it. It wasn't even damaged during transit. This was inside the box surrounded by other parts so nothing else had hit it i'm not going to kick off right now because i didn't kick off a dx racer straight away i kicked off a dx racer because of their repeated attempts to send out a replacement part which continuously was faulty 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 so i'm going to get back in touch with cursus and get that part replaced and then i'll make a judgment after that and see what see what it's like in terms of the mechanism the the chair is it's quiet so far i'm getting i'm going to see how it goes after a week or so after it's been bedded in but so far, it's fine. No squeaks whatsoever. It's uh, It's got a bit too much play in it for my like. And though it's right now, it's locked. It shouldn't be moving. But you see, it does have a little bit of play in it. And it's clicking as it's hitting a, a sort of stop. In terms of uh, how much movement you get with the chair. Again, it's not as good as DX Racer, I'm afraid. DX Racer, if you think there's the base. That's what you sit on. There's the backrest. With DX Racer, the, back, the, the base can move independently of the backrest. So it does sort of does this. But with this chair, it, it just basically moves like that. The two are kind of locked together, which uh, I'm not overly I'm not overly impressed with. It doesn't have anywhere near as man much maneuverability as the DX Racer chair does. It's um, there's a lock mechanism there which sort of goes back to about there, and that's it. That's all you've got. Uh, the gas lift obviously goes up and down as you'd expect. That's fine. But apart from that, there's not really a lot to say about the mechanisms. Very restrictive. So that that could have been better. The lumbar support, I'm missing that if I'm honest. The other chair had a, a lumbar cushion at the base of your back, which a lot of people I've seen reviews on, they just don't like using those cushions. I need those cushions, really do need those cushions. This does have lumbar support at the base of the chair via a little knob, which is, it's, it works like a car seat where it's got a mechanism inside the chair that pushes a, a I don't know, like a bar inside the chair towards your, your lower back. But it's nowhere near as, as cushioned as an actual real cushion. There's nowhere near as much support there. So I'm missing that. The The neck cushion is pretty good. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Good touch, how you can have your own embroidery on the on the, on the the cushion. You can customize that on their website. And it's it's nice, it is. It's it's a lot, this neck cushion is a lot softer than the actual chair. The padding in here is a lot softer and it supports your shoulders. It's just nice, it's just a nice feeling cushion. It feels, you've got more support at the base of the cushion than you do at the top. So it does feel like a real, proper cushion it's not just a lump where your neck is so that's nice what i'm not impressed with there's always a downside with these things is the the way it's fixed to the chair it's just elasticated around the head so i can see you know as you as you're maneuvering around as you're shuffling around i can see that just pinging straight off the top it might not happen i don't know it doesn't look like it's been designed to not happen so <laughs> i don't know i'm gonna see how that goes other than that the the arms uh, you get all you get all the degrees of movement in the arms. I mean, I see people making a big deal about that and focusing on it. I just don't care. I don't care about the arms. The arms are there as long as they're soft and they are. They're soft enough. They're not. They're not foam. They're not padded. They're not cushioned. They're not you know leather. It's just plastic with a little bit of just a little bit of play in it. So it's not rock hard, but it's not fabric. Um, they're a bit, you know. It's no better or worse than the DX Rays one. The, the base, like the, where the wheels are, the, the metal star bracket at the bottom. It's not a bracket, but you know what I mean, the, the, the metal base. Feels cheap, feels thin. It's metal, obviously it's metal, but it's it just feels a lot cheaper than... I'm, I'm comparing it to the other chair, which I'm going to have to, obviously, because most people, when they are buying a chair like this, you're going to be comparing it to something else and wanting to choose one or the other. The DX Racer base feels a lot more premium however that could be part of the problem which i'm having with it with it's squeaking so far this one although it doesn't look as good in terms of the base it's it's a lot more quiet and the wheels the wheels are fine they're, there's no stiffness there there's no squeaking there's no creaking they're fine there's some gaps where base meets backrest that's an uneven the backrest is way too far away from the back of the the, the, the base there's a gap between the, the backrest itself and the base which i don't like at all Again, I don't know. It might not matter over time, but that's why 
there's no maneuverability with the backrest because it, it is just sort of fixed on an L-shaped bracket. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to give it a couple of weeks and see how it goes. So I'll check back in a second for my final thoughts. So it's been a week since I built the chair. It's now the following Monday. I've been using this heavily a good 10 to 12 hours a day for a week. Uh, yes, I know I use a PC far too much. That's just my life. But I'm in a good position now to give some final thoughts and opinions on the Quersus G7, G702 Geos chair. And so we'll start with the pros. We'll start with the pros on the Quersus chair. The first pro is a direct result of the first negative of the chair, which was the four millimeter ish cut, which was in the base of the chair. I got in touch with Quersus on Wednesday last week and told them about the, the slit in the leather. Of course, they were a little bit embarrassed by that, given that they saw my DX Racer review, which had multiple cuts in the leather. So they weren't overly they weren't overly proud of the fact that they sent me a chair with a cut in it. I got in touch with them Wednesday last week. It's now Monday the following week, three business days later, and the replacement package has just arrived in the post. Given that it's come from a different country in Europe, and it's a quite a sizable package, ladies, um, it's I'm very impressed with that. You can't ask for anything more than that. So thumbs up to Quersus. The package arrived on time. It was traceable through the, the courier's website. It was well packaged, it was well secured, and it's come with no damage, no issues with it whatsoever. So they got it right, well, second, strictly second time round, but I can't ask for anything more than that. There was a problem, I got in touch with them, they responded extremely fast and fixed it straight away with no questions asked. So what I'll say in addition to that is that it's open to interpretation that potentially that they fast tracked this and gave special treatment because this, this chair is going to someone who's gonna ultimately create a YouTube video on it. What I'll say in response to that is, that's up to Quersus to now take it forward. They've set that expectation. They've demonstrated that level of brilliant customer service and that should then be expected from anybody else who buys a chair from them in the future. So I'll leave that with Quersus. So other positives, um, um, the look of the chair is, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm really happy with the look of the chair still. It's, obviously it hasn't changed in a week. It still looks the same, but when you walk up to the chair and you turn it around to sit in it, you're just like, yes, I, I, like, I like it. <laughs> I do like the look of the chair. When you sit it side by side with another chair, the likes of the DX Racer chair, I still much prefer the look of this one. They are both beautiful chairs in their own right, but I prefer the aesthetic of this chair. It's very Nvidia sort of GTX 10 series, all angular and straight. It's got a unique aesthetic to it. Whereas the other chairs, they're all much of a muchness. They all look good in their own right, but they're very generic, you know, car seat with wings on them and a headrest. Whereas this one's very unique. There's nothing that I've seen that looks like this on the market. So I'm, I'm very happy with the aesthetic. And I guess that's what you're buying this for. You're buying it for the look of the chair. Uh, in terms of the comfort of the chair, over the week, there are a couple of negatives to it, but I think overall, overall, I'm, I'm happy with the comfort. There's been no times at all over the last week where I've been sat on it and been like, I need to get up. I need to get up and walk around, I feel uncomfortable. It doesn't feel premium. It doesn't feel like a handcrafted chair from the, the technicians over at Rolls-Royce. It's not a family heirloom that you're gonna pass down to your grandkids at all, but for the price point that it's at, which is approximately 399 euros, 340 English pounds sterling, it's fine, it's comfortable. I would, in some areas, expect more for the money, but in terms of comfort and aesthetic, it's priced, I would say, about right. Uh, so I think overall, just to summarize all the pros, it's, it's, it's a very, very good looking chair. It's comfortable, everything else around it is okay and the customer service is is great. So that, they're, all the, they're all the pros that I can find on the chair. So the negatives will come, right, so we'll go on to the negatives now. The arms, I'm not happy with the arms on the chair. They're cheap, they're, they're weak, and they're noisy. So the arms, when, you, when you're leaning on the chair and you get up off the chair occasionally, it emits this really loud click, which you can hear it there. That's just when I'm touching the arms. They're slightly, I mean, they're off camera. I'll put a bit of B-roll on it so you can see it, but. When you wiggle the chair, you get this really annoying click from both sides. Uh, the left more so than the right, but uh, it's, that's just cheap. There's no need for that to happen. There'll be manufacturers out there, suppliers, who'll be able to provide better arms than this. Uh, so that's that's not really acceptable. Too noisy, too too flimsy, and too cheap. Uh, the, restrict, the restricted movement on the chair has been a bit of an issue for me. It's not been a, a deal breaker, but it's just... I would have preferred more flexibility in the in the movement of the chair, but it's not been there. It's not been a problem. It's just sometimes where you, when you're writing an email, you want to be upright in the proper posture so you can concentrate and you, you sat up right and proper. But when you're gaming or when you're just watching a, a video or something and you want to just chill and relax back, you don't really get that option. 
there's not much movement in the chair for that so it's the restricted movement it's not a deal breaker but it would have been nice to have more movement in the chair i would right so the other thing about the the size of the chair the size of the chair is a bit of a strange one the geos g ranger chairs are actually for taller people i didn't realize that when i chose this because it's not massively advertised on their website there are a couple of images here and there which say it's for people of a certain size and weight but it's not massively advertised so i didn't realize that the proportions are a bit strange I'm five foot ten ish. I'm not short, but I'm not tall. And I fit in terms of torso lengthwise, I fit perfectly in this chair. When I first sat down on this chair, I didn't think oh, I'm sitting on a chair that's way too big for me. So you sit on the chair, the headrest is exactly where it should be, and the base of my head here, where the neck cushion should hit, hits absolutely perfect. So it's like in terms of length, I'm perfectly suited for this chair. I'm also quite wide framed. So I fit within the wings just fine. But the base, my legs appear to be far too short for the base of this chair. So if I was actually taller, my legs would have fit on the base fine, but then my torso would have been too tall for the neck cushion, which would have had to go up, which then leaves this too flimsy and potentially uh, open a ping off the top of the chair. So it's a bit strange. It feels like I'm adequately suited lengthwise in terms of torso for the chair, but my legs just don't fit on the base, which is what happens is you find yourself sort of slouching a bit and leaning, you know, just sort of drifting forward a bit. So you're in a bad posture just so that your legs fit on the base. So I think the base needs shortened a little bit. But if you're a tall guy or a tall girl, it should be fine. Um, the neck cushion. The neck cushion is is a pro. I do like the neck cushion. However, it doesn't interfere with headphones. If you do, if you are a headphone user, it, it will get in the way. That's it's not, it's not really the fault of the chair. It's not really the fault of the courses. It's just one of those things. If you do like having the neck cushion on, which you can take off, uh, it's, it, it does protrude quite far out. So I've got these headphones here. These are the Sennheiser Momentum headphones, and they've got a metal, uh, like a thin metal band, which goes around here. So that's a sharp. That's not sharp. That's sort of sharp. It's about one millimeter thick metal. Um, and when you're wearing the headphones and just any movement in your head and this metal hits the cushion, which immediately makes you think, oh shit, I'm gonna rip the chair, I'm gonna shave the chair and damage it. So you feel like you're locked into a straightforward sort of sitting position, you can't turn your head when you're wearing headphones. But that's not the fault of the chair, you don't have to use the neck cushion. Uh, and the lumbar support, the final negative of this chair is the, the lower lumbar support which again i've watched a lot of reviews on chairs on youtube over the last few weeks and people tend to not like the lumbar support i do i i really really need that lumbar support uh and the the built-in support on this chair is just not good enough it's not it might as well not be there there's a turning knob which forces an internal mechanism to push the base of the chair forward and back it's so insignificant and non-existent that it might as well just not be there i really do miss the lumbar support on the dx racer chair which is not really a representation of quality of DX Racer because it's a completely separate part. They've just got a cushion and just strapped it to the chair. It's not really indicative of the quality of the chair. I just think at this price point, there should be uh, an optional lumbar support cushion just put into the box of the chair for the uh, for your lower back. Is it forces you into an S shape, which makes me feel a lot more comfortable in the chair when I'm sort of forced into an S shape. I don't know. I think Cursa should have included that in the box, but there's nothing I can do about that. So I think overall, in conclusion, the chair doesn't scream quality. It doesn't scream, you know, a good investment, but it is good for the price point. You're buying it for the aesthetic. If you like the look of the chair, you're not really going to be disappointed with all the, the little niggles here and there, the, you know, the, the noisy arms, the lack of a lumbar cushion. You're buying it because it looks good. And if you like the look of the chair, you're not going to be disappointed. So I think overall, I probably will continue to use this chair as my daily chair. I like the look of it more than the DX Razor chair, so I'm gonna stick with this as my daily chair for now. So thank you very much, guys. That's my review on the Cursus G702 chair. If you like the video, hit like, subscribe, all that kind of jazz, and I'll see you guys in the next video.